Well, with that being said, all items for, that the zoning board looked at tonight, uh, we have done, and the meeting of the Lowndes County Q Live meeting is officially adjourned. For our um, other business, sir, we did have a presentation lined up for Mr. Corey Hall. Corey is the planner associated with the Metropolitan Planning Organization. I'll let him do a little bit more background. But ultimately, why he's here and what he's requested y'all's attention on is he's getting ready to um, come into the final stretches of an update of a transportation master plan, division plan for the entire district. With that, this is a major document, very directional. Um, and with its current status, uh, you are going to be able to come and present that before you, not only for your awareness, but also if you have any questions or concerns. Good evening, Thank you very much for having me. I'm going to be pretty brief here. Um, in front of me, you have a fact sheet um, about the transportation plan. During the month from July 7th to August 7th, we're visiting uh, various community agencies and organizations presenting this information to them, as well as those in three local houses. Uh, the next of which is this Thursday from 4 o'clock to 6.30 at the Southside Library. To start off, and we've been discussing this before this committee for going on two years now, um, our uh, transportation plan, the common community vision, and our socioeconomic demographic study have been completed. Uh, this assists both the transportation plan and Lowndes County's upcoming comprehensive plan. So that started our process two years ago. Um, first, to remind you though, the Metropolitan Planning Organization is a federally designated uh, agency responsible for transportation planning in Valdosta and Lowndes County. All cities, more than 50,000 population, have a metropolitan planning organization. We're tasked with setting that transportation projects and policy. Over the last two years, we have been looking at what are our challenges for transportation. And many of those are somewhat obvious, but others um, were, were not as obvious as we uh, conduct our public input. East-West connectivity, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, funding for roadway maintenance, and intersection safety are just a couple of the, the issues that are challenges in our community that we're trying to overcome in this transportation plan. As you recall, we um, started with our common community vision that identified 18 goals in areas related from economic development to education to transportation. What we did for the transportation plan was take that common community vision and ask ourselves, how can transportation impact economic development, land use development? How can it impact education? And the transportation projects and policies that you see uh, are reflective of that, of those questions. We have three policies and several strategies um, included in our transportation plan. The first is a complete streets policy, asking that all projects that you see listed on your sheet that receive federal funding have a design that accommodates all roadway users, whether it be cars, trucks, bicycles, utility infrastructure, and so on. The second policy is an intersection improvement policy that discusses requiring uh, our local governments or the State Department of Transportation to evaluate as an alternative to an intersection improvement a roundabout design. Roundabouts are anywhere from 30 to 90% safer depending on the local characteristics of a four-way intersection. So we think they should be evaluated, not necessarily going to be the final decision by that local government or, or a state DOT. The third policy is an active healthy lifestyle policy, encouraging local governments to spend more than $500,000 annually on bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure or programs to promote safety in bicycle and pedestrian activities. Um, we also encourage partnerships in that uh, area as well um, between various organizations. Transportation planning strategies. We have several things listed there, including um, setting public transit in our community, uh, downtown truck traffic development, uh, parking studies, uh, and other things that um, our local governments want to look at when it comes to transportation planning activities. If you recall from our uh, socioeconomic data study, we have projected population of 149,000 people in Lowndes County in the year 2040, employment of 76,000, and school enrollment from kindergarten through advanced collegiate degrees of 59,000 students. 
So quite a change from where we are today at just over 110,000 in population, 56,000 people employed, and only about 34,000 students. So what we took all that information and presented it to you uh, in the public in the form of those projects that you see on that sheet. 29 projects, totaling a uh, billion dollars, just over a billion dollars, 500 million of the billion <coughs> is uh, maintenance of roadway infrastructure, our existing transportation infrastructure system. 400 million is for new roadway capital projects. Those 400 million are the project list you see. We also have uh, $20 million for rural public transit, that's our existing uh, transit systems, and more than $70 million for a proposed urban transit system, which we have not identified a local funding source for yet. But to give you a little reminder, it costs $1 million per lane per mile to resurface I-75. To resurface a state highway, costs $278,000 per lane per mile. And to build a new urban roadway from design to right-of-way acquisition and construction costs $5.3 million per lane per mile. So that kind of gives you a little idea of where those costs come from and why all of a sudden we have a billion dollars in our uh, projected budget. The projects you see there um, include uh, many projects around our community, including I-75 uh, reconstruction projects, as well as Jerry Jones, <coughs> Gornto, several intersection improvements and several bridge replacement projects in Lowndes County. Uh, in addition to this, um, we are changing um, updated dollar amounts on several of our projects. So we have our short-term transportation improvement program that we are amending also. And this is also serving as a public comment period for that document as well. Uh, and those are related to the I-75 projects primarily. As I uh, said, our next um, open house is going to be this Thursday from 4 to 6.30 at the Southside Library. And we're open to having anybody uh, come and speak to us there. Or we're available um, uh, at the South Georgia, Southern Georgia Regional Commission office um, whenever they like. So thank you very much, and I'll answer any questions from you. So was the part of the billion dollars is for the uh, interchange improvement on 75? Yes. And 29 and 22 are supposed to be coming off the ground this year. Right? Yes, exit 22 and 29 should be going to construction letting, with, I'm going to say within the next 6 to 12 months, depending on what Congress does with their funding, um, which they're debating right now. Um, so depending on what happens there, we should begin to see construction at those two exits, very short. Uh, under this health and lifestyle policy, you, you mentioned bicycle lanes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be something similar to like the Wayne Street landing strip? strip? Not necessarily. Uh, it might be uh, bicycle lanes that are on uh, Gornco Road, the new section of Gornco Road that the city built. It might be just wide shoulders, uh, paved wide shoulders. It depends on what's appropriate for the context of that area. Or maybe it's improved sidewalks. Um, if I recall, the city of Alasta installed more than three miles of new sidewalks last year um, throughout the city. So it could be a variety of things that <coughs> bicycling and pedestrian activities. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, Jerry, you mentioned that evaluated about 100 projects, 75 did not make the short list that you see here. Those 75 were eliminated for various reasons. Uh, either they did not rank high enough, or we just ran out of money um, to fund them. So we evaluated several uh, grade separation locations, but did not select any. There's something about the charter line. Is that part of this also? Yes, what we're um, wanting to do under our transportation strategies, transportation planning strategies, is to look at a study that will recommend and provide information to our local elected officials on how to mitigate truck traffic impacts in downtown.
So, so we're currently discussing with our local governments how to fund that. And um, um, we currently got federal funding allocated for it, but we're working with our local governments to fund the local match. It is, of course, public transportation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I know the city voted to, to do a transportation study. I don't know if the county is up there out there on the north or not. Uh, is that included in here too, as far as a, a mass public transit? We do that in our uh, transportation planning strategies. However, the Metro <coughs> organization included it in our fiscal year 2016 budget. And it's the same with the uh, truck traffic setting. We're, we're working with the local governments to, to find that local map. Timetable for the transportation plan or any of the projects in particular? Any projects other than the interstate you said would probably be in the next six to 12 months, I think you said. So. Um, yeah, on that project list on the left, far left hand column should be an open to traffic date in five year increments. We expect those projects to be open to traffic um, within that five year increment. So, um, the exit 2, exit 11, exit 22, and 29, those are probably our furthest projects along. Um, I would suspect those are going to be open to traffic before 2020, if not way before that. So. Any other questions? Corey, thanks so much for coming to see us. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good evening. You too.